it's back. Executive producer Azariah Milan Carter Gina is in the building. How y'all doing, man? Yesterday was our first day back. 2021, the year of the light. Shirley Jones, yes, Shirley Jones, man. Nights over Egypt, the Jones girls. And I advise everybody to go get the Jones Girls Essentials. So many hits on there that they have. And, uh, you know, shout out to everybody for tuning in yesterday, tuning in today. Uh, it's really, really, uh, really crazy. If you think about it, right? If you think about um, what we do Instagram, we scroll through Instagram we see something we like, it's usually 20 seconds, 30 seconds. We'll look at it again. If it's hilarious or something, we'll look at it again. That's all of a minute. But to be doing a show consistently for 10 months straight, where people tune in for an hour straight, hour and a half straight sometime, and thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of views, I mean, it's really an honor, you know? And 2021 is the year to light, meaning we're moving on. I'm trying to keep that consistent. 2020, we lost a lot of people. 2020 was really, really bad. But 2021, we have to look past that and move forward. Yo, what's up? <laughs> Pachanga, Louis from the hood, uh, Louis Guzman. Love you, my brother. You know I threw up your joint. COVID, stay the mask, wash your hands, social distance. Oh, uh, Louis Guzman, boy, let me tell you something, man. Living legend, man. Uh, helped me when I first came in the game. I am forever in debt. Uh, I see Laz from Detroit. Laz, I told you I'm going to get to you like around um, 840. Uh, Pizza Rock, what's good? And so 2021. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. When you fall into depression, when you fall into dark thoughts, it's the dark clouds over you. You ever heard that term? And some people just stay in that zone. And that's when you get depression. That's when you stay in the in the rut. We using the light. We moving towards the light. Even if the light looks this little, go towards the light. Okay? So, let me tell you one of the most funniest stories in the world. Hitmaker. Happy New Year, my brother. Happy New Year. Hitmaker, you said you ain't going to be accessible. You said uh, you ain't going to be accessible. You're going, you know, you'll only pick up for somebody who you really want to talk to. I get with that. Uh, shout out to Isaac Wright Jr. The man got the show uh, on ABC for Life with 50 Cent. One of the most interesting people I've ever Spoken to in my life. The man was in jail for life for 72 years. Took it all back. Now he is uh, a lawyer in the same court that falsely convicted him. Um, I was on the phone with him earlier and the Bronx Borough President, Ruben Diaz Jr. And we hearing him out. We vetting him out to see if we going to support him for mayor of New York City. So he stated all his cases. Very interesting. Very interesting. And what's crazy is a lot of people have been trying to get me to endorse him for mayor of New York City. But they always say, yo, you have a friend in the mayor. I don't really need a friend. All I care about is my people. All I care about is opportunity. All I care about is, you know, how are we going to give back? And how are we going to uh, empower the youth to become more? And set them up. Because these schools nowadays, I really don't give a fuck about Paul Revere. I don't give a fuck about um, uh, the British are coming. Like, you know, all that shit don't make you a dollar. It won't help you run a business. It won't help you with nothing. So I want people to learn the school things that they can actually use. Zoe Dollar. Zoe what's up, OG? Stuff I, I say, OG, what's up with you? My brother, let me tell you something, man. Uh, I'm glad to have you here uh, on the big, big show. Uh, you've been a friend of mine for 
for quite, many quite years a while now. now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you've always been an excellent guy. You've always been a beautiful person. We appreciate um, you. I don't want to dwell on negativity, right? Yeah. Um, but recently, you know, it was a, a legend you got shot. Is this true? Or yeah, definitely true, man. Just blessed to be here. Thank God, man. And let me tell you something, man. I'm happy for you. And for me personally, not digging into to the details like that, you've always been the nicest, most nicest guy in the world. Like it's so that was that really threw me because you know sometimes when I look at Crazy. it throw you it, it throw you for a loop every time when you think about it. Me too. Yeah, because when 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 I look at you know, I got Instagram like everybody else. And when I see certain young rappers, they turning up. They pretty much begging for the smoke. And <laughs> with you, all I see you do is have a great time. You're yeah. on the jet ski. You're doing your music. Um, so, so, so I get you were shocked at that, too. Yeah, I was like, wait, what? Like, the whole time, I'm just thinking, like, did I, did I, did I cross somebody wrong on the way? Like, did I, do, you know what, I do something or something? But. Man, I couldn't even believe it, bro. You can't make sense of it. Nah, I couldn't. It ain't it ain't registered at all. I believe you. And and that's hard and that's hard for me to say cuz I done seen everything in the world. I done seen every bullshitter, every my, everything, every story you could think of. Yeah, but facts. I honestly believe you because your energy and the person you are since I met you since day, and I'm, I met you since you was a kid, kid. It's always been positive. Uh, I see you welcome other people into the city. You embrace them. You take them. Uh, so um, now you're back. Is you healing up well? Yeah, I'm. I'm getting there slowly. I mean, I'm out the wheelchair. I'm on crutches, but you know, I'm getting there. Yeah, I mean, uh, so now you're getting back. Uh, new reality. Do, do you have like a new perspective in life when this happened? Um, man, not to even sound like negative, but I just felt like, like it's, it's like a um a, a part of my mental is like gone that day. You know, there's no way you could come back with the same mindset or be the same person. Something like that happened, you know. But I'm just I'm just trying to shake the 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 mental part of it, like the physical but I, part. But Time. But I believe you can. And I've been shot yeah. twice. I've been shot at 30 times in my life. For sure. And, and so who you are as a person never leaves you. It's in your DNA. It's in your heart and soul. Yeah. So um, maybe feel like that right now because you like, damn, who would want to do this to me? Yeah. But eventually you'll get back to giving back, to being a beautiful person, to oh, not being sure. so mad. You know what I'm saying? Because you could have died. And God kept you here for a reason. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely feel like it's a purpose, you know, like not that I didn't think that, but I was more so on a on a on a pursuit of finding like what's my real purpose here, you know, like cause I know I just wanna I don't wanna just leave and be known as Zoe Dollars, like, you know, like I wanna know that I left and impact the world, you know what I'm saying? Like change many lives, which that's the path I was on anyways. But like now it kinda like slowed me down mentally because I'm just the physical part, I'm cool with that. I'm going to heal up. That's what the body do naturally. But the mental part, though, yeah, that's that's a struggle. Yeah, excuse me for, for cutting you off. Everybody keeps saying on the comments that Dr. Dre, the legendary Dr. Dre, is in the hospital with some brain aneurysms or something. I don't know if somebody I really trust could, 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 confirm. could confirm it, then God bless my brother, Dr. Dre. Love him. He's he's a mentor, an idol, an icon. A living legend in the hip hop, you know, we can't even explain what he's done for hip hop music. Discovering NWA, discovering uh, so that leads on to Ice Cube, that leads on to 50 Cent, that leads on to Eminem, that leads on to Snoop Dogg. I mean, his family tree is out of this world. And if there's anything wrong with Dr. Dre, may God bless him. Um, and I'm praying for him truly. So Zoe, so you go with this with this music business, right? So there's a couple of questions I have for you, right? Um, is your age group, your era, 
yeah. taking the COVID virus serious? It's double-sided. Some of us are, and some of us just like, you know, I feel like the ones that's not is just mentally that's what the brain and sometimes us as humans, we do that. We tend to like try to forget something that's serious so we could not feel impact by it or feel like affected by it. But some of us are taking it serious because like me and you, we know personal people who've been affected by that. Like I know personally about five to 10 people that die from this. Yeah, I know at least 100, 200 people that die because I'm at that age. Yeah. So you're younger than me. I'm at that age and all the security guards of all the strip clubs, starlets and all that in New York, they all died. And and just too many, like Fred the guard, so just too yeah, many that, people. That touched me right there. That a one bunch of my friends' mothers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and, and so it's very, very real. Uh, me, myself, everybody gets mad at me when I say it, but I'm taking the vaccine as soon as I can. My dollar, my doctor told me not to, but I don't care. I'm I mean, taking the I, vaccine. I, I, I tell you what, uh, I tell you what, OG, I had it and I didn't take nothing. I didn't go to the hospital. Mom Dookie got me together. So I think I'm fine with that coming from where I come from. We island people, man. It's, it's remedies, <laughs> but like, yeah. I'm, I'm staying away from yeah. it. I, I even... speak to Boogie, and Boogie be like, yo, man, no, I'm gonna leave this man. This man's illusion. I'm like, yo, boy, this is an illusion. I'm like, yo, 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 Boogie, you bugging out. And yeah. so with, 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 with your era of hip hop, um, which is now, yeah. um, do artists really care about record labels and record execs and so-called big machines anymore? Do in my day, that, that's all we wanted was to get signed to a major label. We did. Yeah. Um, me, I, me too. Me so, too. I, I cared about that, but I feel like in the era we in right now, not even just like an age group. With the internet, it just makes it so much more easier for the labels. The job that the labels used to do, it makes it so much more easier that you in control of that. Like this platform is your promotion. This platform is your fan base to really show what you need to show. You just need to partner up with a label. Give yourself enough leverage in order for the label to come through and feel like you worth partnering up with and you know standing behind you and doing the rest that you can't do because at some point you do need them you know some levels they won't let you get to and as they i speak as me being who i am the You're not that be i believe that they control the uh the award shows you know certain awards and shit like that I won't even let you get on there without having that behind you you know you don't got the right publicist you don't got the right team you don't got the product managers that's stepping up and speaking for you with the name it's just unless you just colossal and it's like you know what we have to do this like you got to be like a billy eilish or xxx without a machine for people to be like you know what he don't even need that but in the long run you will though you know uh i can't help but think of all my Haitian people, when I look at Zoe Dollars, and I love that from time to time you always post the kids in Haiti. Yeah, got to. You know, and I look at those kids, and I look at all kids, especially yeah. brown and black kids, yeah. when I'm driving, and I remember me. You know what I'm saying? My mom's had four kids, and we didn't really have nothing. And I remember crossing the street with my mom's. So whenever I see a kid, I always say that could be me. That could be the future Obama. That could be the future, um, you know, next person. So I love that you constantly think about Haiti and, and you always rep your people, man. What, what does it mean to you to rep your people? Man, it means so much to me because when I look at them kids, I do see myself like, that's why when I go to Haiti, I make sure I see kids. I like, I see the people that came from where I came from. When I look at those calves that's in the street, that used to be me catching those calves going to school. Cause I grew up in Haiti. I was raised in Haiti until I came here for school, you know? So when I look at them, it's just like, 
it's just seeing me all the way. That's just what I see. You know, I don't see a poor kid. I see a beautiful kid that has a big, bright future. You know, all they need is opportunity, which is what the United States gives. Opportunity. Well, you know, you had every opportunity to fuck up, and you chose to stay the course. You cho chose to learn the business. You chose to be positive. Uh, what was the difference between you and somebody else who said, who you love, who you grew up with, that said, yo, yo, so that ain't for me. I'm, the streets love me. Yeah. And you said, I'm going this way. I mean, the difference is seeing my mom work so hard, bro. Like, you know, just her took care of almost 10 people by herself. And it got to a point where I just had to say, like, I want to do this too for my peoples and for her times 10. So I ain't had no choice but just follow my dreams and just stay consistent at something. You know, I know at some point, wherever I'm at right now, I prayed for it and I work harder to get it. I work harder to get it. Yeah, I believe in you. I always have. What you doing with the music now? Uh, I was supposed to drop, but I didn't, you know, because it's end of the year. I, I, I had a meeting with my team. They're like, yeah, just let the year go by and you do your thing. You might lead a year out with a video, but I got a project coming. I got a few projects coming. I got so much music. I'm sitting on over three, four hundred music, like records done, just sitting, you know. Real and, so, any collaborations? Because I know you cool with everybody. Yeah, I got records with everybody you could think about. If you you name it, I got it. It's sitting right. <laughs> yeah, if you name it, I got it. So I'm just waiting to go. Right now, I'm free. So therefore, everything is all mine. Like my masters, everything is everything is mine. So I'm really gonna go up. You know. Yeah. And when, so all you really need is like a real dis distribution. Like me, yeah. I got a distribution deal with Empire with Gazi, yeah. and and they do great by me. And um, and they just put my shit out. Yeah. You know, I, we put the team together to work our shit, but they distribute my shit. So I wind up, they help me, but I own my master still. I own all my music, but, you know, and then we work with radio and all that. And that's that, that's the way I'm, I'm thinking every artist should go. Just my opinion. It's, my, it's mine as well. It's mine as well. Definitely. Yeah. It's def uh, yeah, I feel, um, I feel like so, you should own. Go ahead. Owning, own, owning is very important. You know what I'm saying? Like I was in the label situation. It was amazing because a lot of people tend to think that they don't touch their dreams until they make millions, which is completely false. Mm -hmm. The dream was as a kid grinding. I've been in the studio since I was 10 years old, 11 years old. So. My goal was to get signed, build a fan base, and have my music touch people. My goal was never to make hundreds of millions off of music. And I you know, did. That's why hip hop, that's how hip hop was invented, is the, the music of oppressed people. I, so, I, yeah, it, it was made so we could express ourselves, whether it's political, whether it's partying, whether it's whatever it is. It's, it's always been the true origin of hip hop. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like I accomplished that goal, which I'm also a hustler and a businessman. So I knew like the money that I want to make, the money side, it ain't going to come from music. Music is just going to open the door for me to go get that money. You know, like. Well, that, that's still the truth for Fat Joe. That's still the truth for DJ Khaled. That's still the truth yeah. for Dr. Dre. Uh, yeah. You know, um. Dr. Dre, he made more money off his headphones than his music. So did so, Nas. So did Ross. So did everybody we know. Hove. You name yeah, them. That, that's right. And so yeah. and so you got to understand the music is dope. It's what we love to do, but it gets us in the door to get yeah. other things done. Exactly. That's, 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 that's definitely the goal. And therefore, I, I own a couple business and I push a lot of other things outside of the music. That's why I brand myself as a, I'm in the music business, but I'm also a businessman that make music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's very, uh, uh, it's very apparent. I'm trying to think of the right word. Evident. Yeah. You know, when you, when you, when, when you see the Rosses owning checkers and all that, when you see uh, the finger lickings, 
with 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 with, with Freezy and E Class and Khaled, and you see all the all the guys in my shit pit bull up in the fucking school. Yeah, Pitbull, Pitbull definitely one one of the people that I grew up watching him battle in that Fade Masters. Wow. When he so had you seen him when he was like a battle rapper with yes. the dread, with, yes. with, with the braids and all that. Yes, I got a chance to see that. Man, that's crazy. So look, my brother, thank you for coming on here, man. We love you. I pray for you. We still man, praying I, for you. Uh, I want you to be safe. Definitely safe. Now I'm. I'm just. Uh, I own a bulletproof company, and it's it's unfortunate that happened to me, it, which don't make no sense. I own all bulletproof cars, and I get shot in a car. But I wasn't in one of them. I was in my mama car. Like I just got my mama Benz for her birthday. I'm like, let me cruise. Let me be lazy and not go pick up a bulletproof car. I was coming from the studio. Let me go to this party. What then does I a bulletproof car cost? Like, uh, say a truck, say an SUV bulletproof. What does that cost? They later run you about, like, 140, 150, fully bulletproof, like the highest level of bulletproofing. Oh, that's crazy. What made you get into that business before all this? I wanted to protect artists, man. Like, I see so many of us die in, in cars. You know what I'm saying? Like, rest in peace, Marlo. Rest in peace to um, Matt Dre. So many people, you know, it happened to them. And I'm just like, why nobody don't got this? And I look it up. Everybody that got bulletproof cars is personal. Nobody has a bulletproof car service. So I just came up with it. Oh, man, that's beautiful, man. How can we get in touch with that? Because I might need to buy me a bulletproof car, man. Man, whenever you're ready, you can tap in with me. It's all over my page. And I also got an uh, Instagram for it. It's Aegis. What's at it called? Aegis. At Aegis. At Aegis? Yeah, my brother, it. I love you. Stay safe, all right? You. OG, love you too. Appreciate God you. God bless you, man. Get it. Yeah, that's the young boy. That's the young boy, Zoe Dallas. Uh, good friend of mine, beautiful guy. I don't know if you heard. He, you know, recently was in, you know, they shot at him. He, he got shot. I'm glad to see he's alive. He's always been a beautiful guy to me, man. Um, we try to pray for the light. And everybody keep blowing up Dr. Dre. Um, man, I hope y'all wrong. Uh, they say TMZ uh, reported it, that Dr. Dre has a, a brain uh, aneurysm. Uh, And uh, to say uh, that we love Dr. Dre is an understatement. Um, it's it's uh, there is no um, way to even explain how much love. And I I never really even hung out with Dr. Dre. I met him like once or twice, but the strides and, and the things he's done for hip hop music. I mean, becoming the first billionaire rapper, uh, always uh, doing for the culture, always being, you know, I've been waiting on this album, Kanye West and Dr. Dre got an album together and I've been waiting for that shit to drop so bad. Mafia, what's up? And uh, and if this is true, uh, this is this is sad, bro. This is this is, and I'm hoping because he's so physically fit. I'm hoping because he's such in shape, because he takes care of himself, he'll pull through. And that's always been true with people getting shot and stuff like that, or whatever have you, but. I don't know how that works with uh, brain aneurysms. Uh, beyond the genius, smarter than anybody you know, musically, sonically, picking talent, uh, 
the Quincy Jones of our generation. Um, I don't know uh, what else to tell you. And so prayers for Dr. Dre, and I'm hoping this ain't true. Um, because it's way too early to lose this brother. Way too early. Um, we need more. He has to do more. Um, and so Dre, co-executive producer, if you're watching, I need to know the real 411 on what's going on. Uh, recently, ecstasy of Houdini passed away, and just yesterday, shout out to Charlie Mack. Charlie Mack's a living legend for Philly, and uh, and so Charlie Mack posted ecstasy's funeral. I believe it was in the ATL, and I watched all the old school artists. I've never seen this before perform. Uh, perform at the funeral. And so they was doing friends. How many of us have them? And it was uh, Jalil and and the rest of Houdini. And then I seen Kumo D perform on there. And if you love hip hop music, like I love hip hop music, I was like, fuck yeah, man. And you know, we only get one life. We only live on this earth one time. And so what you do with your life, what makes you happy, uh, when you're in a, it, it, you know, your funeral, your people want to represent you and perform for you. And I was like, yes, I'd never seen it before. But uh, in the words of one of my good friends, uh, Percy T.S., he says, anything is possible. And so, Dr. Dre, we're praying for him. We want him to pull through. Uh, word on TMZ and on here, everybody's saying he has a brain aneurysm. Uh, people have made it out of this, and I'm praying that he does. Uh, because, you know, the world wouldn't be the same without Dr. Dre. This is his... This is as big as Michael Jackson. This is as big as uh, Prince. This is as big as, you know, this, this, this is a biggie Tupac, Dr. Dre. Even though it's a natural, you know, even though it's a natural thing. And so that's why, why when I tell you, um, now I'm not trying to bore you. You know, if you fucking with what I'm saying, let me see some fire signs. If I'm boring you, then I'll get spicy. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's like if you live in life and you got a job and nobody's called you that they're sick in your family. No one's passed away. You're healthy. The weather's nice. Those are the priceless days. Those are the days that you got to appreciate for nothing. For nothing. Today, I rode my bike. Shout out to Ed Smooth. I got barbecue and boogaloo part two. And I'm in there. And, what a woman. and I'm looking at beautiful homes and I'm riding my bike and it's nice and chilly in Miami and I'm like, this is good, man. This is fucking priceless. And um and so uh this is exactly what I mean when I say uh God is great, this is a blessed day. This is whatever. Now, something we say all the time, me and my favorite aunt, Barbara, we say that when doctors say no, God says yes. Okay? And I hope everybody 
gets what I am saying. When doctors say no, God says yes. And I don't know what to tell you, bro. I'm, 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 I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. This fucked me up. Georgia election today, too early to call. Uh, while I'm talking to you, I got CNN on the right-hand side. Uh, very important. Two Senate races that could change the country. You know, Obama, when he became president, he wanted to do a lot of things. The Republicans had that. Congress and Senate, so they was blocking him. And so we don't want Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to come up with great ideas, and then the Republicans block them. So this is very, very big is what's going on in Georgia. It's very early, can't call it, but uh, shout out to everybody who went out there on both sides, Republican, Democrat, who chose democracy. Who chose democracy. And, and everybody who just got on, uh, who keeps telling me Dr. Dre. You know, we've been talking about Dr. Dre. You know, uh, actually the news of Dr. Dre threw me off. I was talking to the young brother, Zoe Dallas, who's a beautiful guy. Um, just talking about the light, positivity. Um, and I read in the comments, and this is why this show is so dope, because it's, it's daily. So, you know, you might like another show, well, you got to wait till next week for them to talk about Dr. Dre. Here we do this shit right on time. Live. Not take talking that real shit. You know. And uh, Pretty Lou, what's up, my brother? You see this, Lou? Lou been fighting cancer for fucking seven years. With therapies, with this, with that. And we've been praying for him and praying for him. And then we got my, you know, doc, Dr. Dre, who's cock diesel, who's filthy rich, and suffers a brain aneurysm. It's the type of shit you can't make up. Prospect TS, I love you. E Philly, I love you. What up, Joey? Come on, Craig. brother. Your What's people been reaching out to me forever, trying to get you on the show. You Word. know, it's a weird night because it's Dr. Dre. You heard about Dr. Dre? Man, I just heard about it right here on your live, man. And um, it, it's really sad to hear that because you know, I'm a physician. So, you know, I see brain aneurysms. You know, we have patients coming in, coming into the ICU and stuff. Um, and, you know, you, the blood vessel in the, in, in the brain, when it gets too thin or weak, um, that's what you call an aneurysm because then it starts to bulge out and then... You know, if it ruptures, that's when it's dangerous. So it, I, I'm praying it, it hasn't gotten to that stage with Dr. Dre. And uh, just praying for that brother, man. And I hope he gets through. Have you heard of uh, patients surviving brain aneurysm? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of the time, uh, brain aneurysm, as long as it hasn't ruptured. Uh, when you ru Even a ruptured brain aneurysm, when you catch it right in time, you take them right to the operating room and you got to do a coiling procedure um, at that time to, to, to fix it up. But, you know, if, it, if you had a brain aneurysm that's ruptured and you haven't gotten treatment and you're not in the hospital or, you know, getting surgery done, then, yeah, that could be life-threatening. I'm out of that negative. What's up, mama? Um, and so you're a physician. Physician. What, what, what do you do exactly? You're a doctor. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hospitalist. So, so I do medicine. I'm in the hospital. So these past, uh, you know, nine months, I've been like almost every single day working on the front lines of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so uh, basically my job entails, you know, so the ER doctor has a patient come into the hospital and then I take that patient, I admit them on the floors and I watch them until they're discharged. Um, so I'm just running around all the hospital the, the floors. The good and bad of COVID. I've seen, I've seen everything regarding COVID. I, I work over here in Las Vegas. That's where I'm at right now at Spring Valley Hospital, but um, man, I've seen, I've seen the worst of nightmares. I've lived through the worst of nightmares these last nine months, man, and I, I can't even begin to explain the type of trauma that I've went through 
just dealing with people's family members, telling them that their loved ones are going to be okay. And then two days later, they're gone. And then having to constantly be in touch with the family. It's been a devastating, traumatic experience, brother. And it's draining. It's, it's draining because, you know, every time... You out? Yeah, man, because every time you go and see a patient, you know, part of your brain is thinking, like, I don't want to catch this. And then the other part of, part of you is thinking, like, what do I do to make sure that they're on the right regimen, the right, the right treatments? And the first couple months that we were treating COVID, we had no idea what to do. And then, you know, luckily we started getting medications that started helping us out. So it's, it's been a blessing, man. And I, you know, I got vaccinated. So I got the first shot of the Pfizer vaccine. Um, so on you the are Muslim? Yes. You are physician? Yes. And you got the vaccine? Yeah, because, you know, they're saying that there's gelatin and pork and that stuff, but it's not. I studied it. I've, I've, I've looked at uh, stuff coming from reps from Pfizer and Moderna. There's no there's no pork or there's no, there's no pig product in it. I ain't even it. talking about the pork. Right? Right. I'm not talking about the pork. I'm talking about the stereotypes in the hood. Uh, well, this has been so killing. Glad. This has been killing brown and black people. Yeah. Uh, more than anybody else. And of course, is the scientific black and brown brothers that want to say that the vaccine is Illuminati, that the that the uh, the aliens are coming down to get you from the vaccine, um, like you took the vaccine. Yeah. Why was it important to you to take the vaccine? Well, first and foremost, I'm at the forefront of this, you know. So I'm 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 literally exposed to COVID every single day, like for 12 hours, 14 hours at a time. So me, you know, even with the, the fast tracking of it, everybody's like, they went too fast, too quick with the vaccine. But I did my research, you know, I, I studied the Pfizer trials, the Moderna trials. And um, I'm like, look, man, at the end of the day, you know, I've been taking a risk for nine months. This is just another risk I got to take. And if other people want to wait and see what the guinea pigs are going through with the vaccine, then, hey, I'm willing to step up and do that. No, I'm taking the vaccine. I'm hey man, salute, salute, salute to you, salute to you for that, brother. Because there's no, a lot of people. Doctor, my doctor, let me tell you something. I seen guys get murdered over one dollar in a dice game in my projects. Right. You think I'm scared of a vaccine? Exactly. You know what you I'm saying? You gotta kill him, killing me. Like I, I don't get these people. Like yeah. You know, it's kind of like um, when you, we at war. It, you know. When you're at war and and the soldiers that are going to the battlefield, they're like, hey, am I gonna get scratched in the battlefield? And then they step back from the battlefield, like, yeah, you might get hurt. You might develop something or so, whatever. But, like, I'm a, I'm a soldier on the battlefield, and I have to take all the hits at this point in time. Like, this is, this is the position I'm in, and I have to let the people know. And I've been doing my duties. You know, like, you know, Chuck D is my big brother. You know, me and him have been spreading awareness um, uh, through, you know, multiple sessions that you I've been You also rap, him. too. You also rap. Yeah. You got so songs hip -hop. with Red Man. You got songs with my brother, The Locksmith. Yes, we just dropped that uh, today. Signs. Where do you find time to make videos and make records? And, so it's like it's like it's like this. Um, so you know, with my life, it's kind of like when I'm not okay. So all, after all the stress and trauma that I go through in the hospital, you know, how people have a way to unwind and figure out a way. I get in the studio. That's how I release my my stress. That's my stress reliever. But it's not just a hobby. It's another career. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing hip hop my whole life since I was in high school. I didn't know if I was gonna be a physician. Or if I was going to be a hip hop artist, I wanted to do both. I was passionate to do both. Everybody told me it was impossible. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep juggling them. In 2013, I linked up with Russell Simmons. I, I did a performance at his house. And then he put me on all that digital. And from that point, I've been doing both. You know, I finished my medical school, my residency. And then I was just like back and forth. Rap, medicine, rap, medicine, rap, medicine. And, uh, you know, I got records with Royce, Ghostface. I was just on tour with Wu-Tang. All, all 2019, I was on tour with Wu-Tang. We did 30-plus uh, cities around the world. So I was the lead opening act for all their concerts, man. So that was, you already know, that was one hell of an experience, brother. You know what I'm saying? It's you just know, rocking it's crazy, those my crowds. Girl, Cause I got to talk about everybody. She says, we can build our immune system, eat different. We can fight it another way. No yeah. vaccine for my, for right. my well, sister, Erica Ford, who's well, you on know, the scene. Yeah, Erica, you being hurt. Wait, hey, look, hey, I, you know I, my girl, I recommend this power to the people. Listen, all I recommend way, all of those line. things. Take your vitamin C, D, elderberry, you know, NACs, do black seed oil, all that stuff, because all that stuff is building your immune system. It is doing that. It's getting your body stronger to fight the infection when it gets into you. Um, you know, increasing your white blood cells, your T cells, your B cells. Do all that. I never say don't do that. But, you know, 
look at the numbers, bro. Look at look at all the people dying, bro, from 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 COVID nineteen. The worst thing is when people tell me that this, that it's fake, and I'm like literally seeing people every day dying. I I've seen thirty four people in front of my eyes die from COVID, thirty four, and I you know what I'm saying? Like that trauma isn't something you get desensitized to because every time a patient dies, I gotta talk to their sister, their brother, their mother, their father like five different conversations and go through the same emotional response each time. See, coming from that perspective, I'm looking at it a whole different way from somebody that might be just sitting at home and thinking everything is just a conspiracy. Um, so as far as the vaccine is concerned, I took the first shot. I'm getting the second shot tomorrow. Um, but you know, so far, so all I had was a little muscle soreness. How long you waited for the second shot? What was that? How long three you weeks. waited for the second shot? You got the big vaccine three weeks ago? Yeah. I got Did the first, you do I was, it on I was like one of the first media? people to get it. Yeah, I was on Vlad TV. I went on Vlad TV um, after I got the shot, and I talked about it at that time. You know what I'm saying? I broke it down and what it was doing, and I just kind of any side effects and stuff that I've noticed from my colleagues. And you know, everybody's doing fine. Everybody's doing fine. Now, there's questions with the vaccine. Is is it truly effective? You know, because when they did the studies, they had like you know. 35,000, 36,000 and say it was 90% effective. But now that we've had like millions of people that have already taken it, I want to see what that effective rate, efficiency rate is now. And the question is how long do you stay immune once you got it? Like, you know how the flu, you got to take it every year? Because they got mutating strains now. The one in the UK they got, they say that one is, is spreading faster than the other strains. So the infection doctor in my hospital says that this vaccine still is effective against all the strains because of the way it works and the way it's targeting that spike protein on the coronavirus. Um, and, and, and you rap all that scientific man, shit. I, I I heard drop you, bars, man, I drop bars, man. I always, that's one thing I do. I actually give seminars and I go into front of auditoriums and, and, and I teach and I teach residents and medical students. I'm also a teacher at my hospital. I actually I train the uh, upcoming class of residents that are trying to be uh, full-fledged physicians. And I teach them, and, and the way I teach them is through hip hop. Like I'll I'll do a lecture, and I'll start rhyming about the words. You know, that's just that's just who you know, I am. School in school in in a hall is backwards to me. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not telling kids to go to to don't go to school. Right. I'm not saying that. Get your education, but we spend so much time of our lives in school. And they're teaching us Paul Revere, the rumble in the jungle, that this, this shit don't make you a dollar, bro. Right. Right? And so I get, unless you're going for like a doctor, uh, a, a lawyer, but if you're going for just be, doing business, yeah. you know, I honestly believe that if you have $150,000, if you're a parent, to give your kid to go to college, I would weigh the difference whether investing 150000 in a business for your child, how much better off would they be? Because you go into school to become a worker. Right. Here you can take the money that you're going to spend in this private school and open your own business. Right. I mean, to me, I think at the end of the day, it's about the passion. What's your love? What's your interest? I mean, if you have a strong desire to be a lawyer, if you're, if you're going to school to become a lawyer, there's multiple businesses that you can get into being a worker, you know? So you, and similarly in medicine, like you become a doctor, but you could have other things that you're involved in, um, you know, outside of just being a, a physician working in a hospital. And with me, I, I'm doing hip hop. So I'm doing gigs. I'm doing, I'm doing things with medicine that's outside of the hospital that is lucrative for me. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you just have to be passionate with, with whatever you want to do. If it's the route of education you want to take, love it. No, you don't, don't force yourself to do it. Love it. But if you want to open up a business, you know, go that route. I feel like it's, it's really about your passion, like what you want to do, because at the end of the day, that passion is going to drive you to success. No matter yeah, what you is, go to. All right, we go to school, but I prefer schools that are vocational, that can mm -hmm. teach you how to be, of technology or teach you how to be, but I'm talking about high schools. Right, like If right. I had a chance to do it over, I would do more, you know, uh, technology. I would do more, if you're into arts, something that you shine in, bro. Right, and, right, right. And not so much read Paul Revere.
Right, right, right. And you know, uh, the rhetoric, the, you know, the tried and true stuff formula. There's a fuck learning. about that. I don't and, even and, know and, if and, that shit's real. Right, exactly. Because a lot of times information that's given to you is not facts, even though they say it's facts. Most um, of so, the time. Know, yeah, most of the time. So you got to have your own inquisition in figuring out what is and what isn't. But, you know, like with me, I had to use my creativity. And that's where the hip hop side of me came out. Because if I was just a lab rat, and I was just studying this and regurgitating this information to give that information, then, um, you know, that that went away from my personality. Like, I needed a way to cr have a create creativity as an outlet, and that's where hip-hop came into my life. And right now, I try to take the information that people put out there in the textbooks, and I try to translate it and also convert it into information that makes sense to me and information that I think will make sense to others. Um, because some of the information I don't necessarily agree with. Even with COVID, when they say, oh, you shouldn't use steroids, I was intuitively thinking, no, steroids is going to help bring the inflammation down. Why are they saying not to use steroids? A week, couple weeks later, they're like, no, use steroids. You know, so I don't always take everything that's being told to me as fact. I try to reason it out, you know, as, as to the best of my ability. Uh, where can we find your music, my brother? Yeah, man. So, um, you know, I got my music on Spotify, iTunes. I go by Lazarus. You know, that's, that's my stage name. You know, my social media is at LAZ Detroit. I just dropped the track today with my brother Locksmith, um, legendary, legendary MC. I saw the you video, know. you in the desert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, man. Locksmith's one of my favorite spitters on earth. Yeah, man. And um, I seen an interview too when he was on Shade 45. I, I've been on Shade 45 too, man, doing the freestyles and stuff. And, um, yeah, Locksmith, that's my favorite, man. When he that's, that's the guy. So, so, you know, like one thing with me as an MC, when I, you know, like people underestimate me as an MC I because I, I got the background of being a physician and the fact that, you know, I'm, you know, my, my, my Pakistani background. So people always kind of look at, oh, hey, he ain't going to bring nothing. But every time I jump on a track, whether it's like Royce, Crooked, Locksmith or whatever, I try to just, I'm like, yo, I got to hold my own in here because this is a boxing. I, it's a competitive sport. Oh, no, you sport. held your own. You held your own. You know, and it's a competitive is, sport. The thing is, you know, with, with music, with hip hop is so diverse that, you know, your style of rap is your style of rap. Right. Young Joey Dollars, who was just here earlier, his style of rap. And the, the thing that makes hip hop so unique is that we're so diverse. You know, yeah. we, we, we got so many spitters that rap about different people. There's people that I really don't even like. Uh, I don't think they're true lyricists. But I love their swag and their right. cadence, yeah. and, I, and I and I buy into their fashion and right. the whole talk. And I'm exactly. like, yeah, I fuck with this guy. Yeah, you you know what I'm saying? Let me ask you a, a quick question. Uh, your top five rappers of all time, being that I got you here. Right, no doubt, man. Um, my top five rappers of all time, man, you know, obviously, you know, Pac and Big, the cliche, got to stay in there just because of how much impact they had on me. Um, the genius, Jizza, who's also a personal mentor of mine, that's one of my favorite MCs. Um, he, I, he might be my favorite MC just because, you know, his wordplay and the science that he puts into it, you can see the connection in that. But um, Liquid Swords is like my favorite album of all time. So, um, yeah, shout out to the Jizza, uh, genius. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm probably going to have to go with Nas and, Nas and M and, and Big Pun. That's six, but, Man, you know. That's six, but yeah. you got an army there. But tonight is, normally I would, I would box you into the five, but tonight is just a, 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 a wild night, you know, because, you know, we're just thinking about Dr. Dre. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and man. Prayers out to that brother, man. Prayers out to Dr. Dre, man. I hope he gets through this. I'm, I'm going to do my research on what's going on. But you see how God alert. work. He get yeah. the, the MC doctor right. to be coming when Dr. Dre's in the hospital. So you can Dr. Khan making a prayer and for educate, Dr. Dre. And educate the people about the narrative. You know, because not everybody knows. I don't know much about brain aneurysms right. and stuff like that. But it was your it, it's, it's God's doing, bro. That you Everything, was a guest. Everything's tonight. on God's time, man. And and, and we have to rest it on that. And, um, you know, you made a point earlier uh, with your previous guest is that, like, man, it's like life is something that we take for granted. And this this 2020 has taught us that it don't matter how young and healthy you are. It don't matter how much money you got at the end of the day. When it's your time, it's your time and your time can come any day. 
You know what I'm saying? I've and seen. So people, we gotta appreciate any day we ain't got no nonsense. Every day, in I life. wake up. Every, my my life has changed since COVID. Like I wake up every day knowing I'm going into that cockpit. I wake up every day, and I just I make that prayer. You know, I make that prayer to Allah, and I say that um, you know, help me get through this day and allow me to do the best I can in this day. And if I don't make it till tomorrow, you know, I'm gonna try my absolute best to help as many people as I can while I'm here. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, man. And uh, hey, man, shout out to Big, uh, you know, Big Pun being like one of my my idols, all time idols, man. And um, Twins is like one of my favorite records ever, man. So Joey Crack, man, you are the man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nothing but love, I my brother. What you're doing with your platform and just reaching out to everybody in this in this time period, like you you yourself have relieved so many people's stress just by having this platform available. And people coming to you because they know when they come into you, they come into the voice of reason, the voice of truth. And there's so many people with platforms that you don't necessarily get that. And um, I just appreciate you. I commend you for everything that you do. Thank for you the so much. All we try to do is be transparent and inform our people. You know, I'm not like the genius or brainiac or whatever they want to call, it, but I just spit it like I believe it. And hopefully, somebody uh, it could enlighten them that day or give them some type of uh. Uh, knowledge and, and, and you know take this shit serious man like I I cannot believe uh, that people are really out with no mask on and clubs mm -hmm. and right. all type of shit and believe it or not Donald Trump got a lot to blame with that because yeah, right. he Word. was running around with no mask telling everybody y'all it's all good it's all do you know how many people might might have died that believed into this guy yeah. and thought like, yo, why I got a mask on? The president ain't got no mask right. on. Right. No, exactly. They follow. You follow whatever's being told and whatever you see. That's what the people follow, man. So, you know, we definitely haven't had a, a great role model with that, man. That's for damn sure. You know what I mean? So right, thank uh, you, my brother. Nothing but love. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank so you, man. Much Stay for up. On. Peace. God Peace, bless. Baby. Yep. All right. Man, man, the doctor and the MC. And uh, like I said, you know, I had a bunch of spicy shit I was going to get into, but uh, tonight, it's a very sad night, news of Dr. Dre in ICU with a brain aneurysm. Now, the way I've been taught to think The year of delight has taught me to think that he's in ICU. That means they're watching him closely. God bless. He has not died. And so the light tells me he has a chance. The light tells me that with God, and with the best doctors around him, he can come out of this. It's not over. It's not too late. And so I need everybody because the power of prayer is so strong. We need everybody to pray together for Dr. Dre. Uh, by far, I mean, I don't even think they could you, there's not legend, there's no icon, it's like he's the top of the top. And so God bless Dr. J. Believe in God. Put God first. Uh, and stay faithful, man. And if you had a blessed day today, if you ate a nice meal, if you're happy, your mom's ain't sick, your kid ain't sick, Today was a good day. Peace, y'all. The big, big show, man. See you tomorrow.